It's all proud of yourselves, aren't you? Just keep on being crickets. Think we understand the world, don't want to learn anything really more about it. Just look around, see some stuff, we don't like it. We then go into our, crawl underneath our rock and be crickets. Actually trying to, I think we're evolving into different types of crickets that was coming through a communication today. The blinded work mule cricket. Everybody gets into the, the rut. And it's forced on you that way. That's what they all have us believe and we have to do. And we tend to go that way. And it's very difficult to escape that. And we will find all the reasons in the world to do so. Stay right there. Just, uh, excuse me, not to, do, not to escape, but to stay right where we are. And I don't understand it because as I've been talking more and more to people on, these are people that actually go out and look at things and, and have to go do something in the world and be up against this oppression that seems to be universal now. When I point out where they can go look to see the black and white for themselves and they find it out, they realize that system does, doesn't really have the authority at all. And that's the, the key to what I've been trying to tell you. You've got to identify it for that. And uh, again, another email came through, a familiarization of even entering into the courts and what it, what you, you walk in and you witness it and you see the, you see the nonsense that it is, but you also realize that's a that's a machine that's working. It's rendering you. It's the things the way I try and tell you how to how to how to uh, challenge that that thing that's uh, rendering a plunder against people. It's it seems to be everywhere anymore. I don't know where our again. I, I just liken it to our fallen nature. We were told we had a fallen nature, and it's exploited to the nth degree. And we don't want to listen. We want to keep making fairy tales. And we want to. You know, think we're getting away with something or, or trying to avoid something or uh, maybe it's thinking we're not dealing with something. And I, you, you live in the world, you're being dealt with if you're not doing some dealing on your own. And I don't mean in wheeling and dealing. Uh, this will be BTW RLM 289, I hope. And uh, if I hope I'm getting out because today's been nothing but trouble. I didn't get into the chat for those of you listening. I'm not in the chat because I've been, the I, the IP I have has been blocked for some reason. It's not uh, not a reason for spamming. It's something that has to do with an open proxy. So I have no way to communicate uh, with anybody or to find out any feedback. So I'm just going to work this out, keep going. And if uh, if I'm not getting out right now, we'll have a podcast or a blogcaster up after, given I can get into uh, into there to do that. So um, so I'm trying to explain that there's realities out there. I'm trying to explain that uh, there, we have to stop making up things that we may have a dislike and then we we don't really cannot make a utopia about what we think should happen and think just because we think it should happen that's the way it is because the ones that are actually manipulating the world are manipulating the world that should be self-evident and there's a couple ways to address that maybe not necessarily at the world level but we also know that become vocal local remember again William Roberts was telling you that all the time even William Roberts figured out when he had to actually apply what his book learning told him, it's a little bit different beast. And so we have to, we go from transition from knowledge into application. And that's what I'm asking you to, to gear up and, and do and be prepared, prepared for. And it's not easy, but it's not hard. Uh, I'm coming to a point as we were talking at the Jefferson Mining District meeting, and all the miners uh, show up. We're getting working out how we're working stuff out, what we're doing, what we've done, and the answers come pretty easy anymore. There, once you get, once you do the study, the right study, not the one to think you be able to profess how much you know, how much everyone else doesn't know. No, once you work out what you know and how it works and relates to the to the oppression against us. Then, then you start to apply it. That's when you get, that's when you start to understand that this is not that big and difficult a discussion. What you're up against isn't the law, the working of the law, or the law that doesn't work. It's up against an unaccountable bunch of people that have taken on the costume of authority and nobody decided but that that wasn't, that wasn't right. And so they continue to run roughshod. And so we've got a kind of a dynamic, just to let you know, like in the mining uh, community, uh, and there's only a few miners that do this, so the rest of them get all burned, run down, but uh, the few miners that understand the black and white and 
apply that before it becomes either administrative or judicial. And in this case, the administrative has to function before they can even trigger judicial. Once you kill the authority in the administrative, you're never going to go to judicial. This is what I said before. This what, it's what makes like traffic stuff so difficult because that's just the judiciary jumping in. They don't tell you it's administrative. They just say it's judicial. And they impose themselves on you and you haven't done the, the footwork to figure out how it was supposed to go administrative first. Now, you ask them about that, which I, I have friends that we, we come together, we think, okay, what do we have to do? What do we have to ask them? We've asked them. You know, we've said, your statutes say this so-called judicial proceeding for traffic is administrative, and they deny it. And that starts to tell you the game you're in. This is game. It's the, 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 um, you're, you're in a, the, the fluidness of a, of a shifting sands. And that's what, when you get instructed about that, once you see it, once you experience it, once you do what you do and you see, then you can take a step back and say, okay, well, that's what that was. And that's why I say try to find simple things to get involved in, to under, to see, to experience it. So it's not, if they're going to tap, tap you anyway, you might as well use it as a learning experience. As long as it's not going to, well, even if it is, especially if it's going to put you in jail or put you in a cage, and you, you should fight harder. But but any rate, uh, even the minimally, you should engage this thing that's against us, that's been built up around us, because if you don't, it, it's just a no, you become more of the victim. And you really don't have, a, at that point, to me, I, to my mind, you don't have an excuse. All the knowledge you have is useless to me. I don't have to hear anything more about it. And most people don't know what they're up against. And those of us that have to, that do engage that system, that we're always finding uh, the nuances of what they try to do to evade their duty under law. Because they're not law. The system is not law. I don't even think it's legal because it doesn't even meet the legal. It's simply an, a, a, a false front of an organized criminal syndicate that is plundering you. It's like the, the guidos are everywhere. They call themselves police officers. They call themselves now even firefighters. They, they have this authority that just destroys everything that used to be, if you will, sacred in, the, in property and people's right to get around. And I'm speaking particularly here with the United States because I don't know the other countries. The United States has a very peculiar and unique thing that goes on that's to be was never to be relieved, relieved from the people, and they've allowed that to be taken away. And then this thing came on, that really not, but not many people understand. Oh, they'll read a lot, and they think they understand, but it's, they don't. I just say they don't. Because when we handle it the way I, I see that we handle it, we're supposed to handle it, we don't have a lot of the problems that I hear lots of other people apparently enjoying to engage. I don't want to go to court. I don't want, I don't want anybody who knows me wants to go to court. This is called before the fact, not after the fact. When you're in there, it's kind of difficult, isn't it? And even th even then, you'll hear me offer you a whole bunch of stuff. That you, those of you that contact me, you ought, you hear there's a ton to do, but you realize uh, that you have a lot of learning too, and it kind of comes too quick. That's why I try to say, get involved, uh, understand the dynamic, understand the reality. Don't don't try to create the the well. It ends up being the fluffy pink unicorns dancing on rainbows for you, even though you think it's the the position of the, you know, it's the ultimate uh, utopia. You know, all these memes start coming to my mind that I'm not going to repeat. But everyone lives in these. This is now becoming the meme. The, it's the memification of reality. You think that's reality, and it's not. But uh, let me move on to what thing I've been trying to warn people from. And again, I'll just preface that I think the technology is cool. I don't think it's in the proper hands. I think the technology is cool because actually, if I could use it, it would help me. But I also know that it's not going to be for us in the future. And right now, it's the Wild West. Uh, in fact, you're watching the SEC having terrible time with this, so they're just telling you don't, uh, that uh, this cryptocurrency issue is an interesting Wild West thing that I think right now it's a time to maybe exploit that. But where this thing goes, as we keep repeating this, is is into the, uh, well, you got social credit, you have a one-world currency, which is not. It's just these digits. It's your connection to that. And I want to point out the the man who invented the Dogecoin will tell you that. He'll, he'll explain that this is, be careful what you think this is. This all is. Now, you, those of you that have seen my little logo I made up, because at the time, uh, and I still, I think Grimner still does accept the Dogecoin. He has, I haven't been told he's not nut. And that kind of, that kind of faded from interest uh, from a lot of people. But it's just a medium. I made up a little logo. It was the Doge of War. If you know the coin, you know that it's a Doge, is a dog. 
uh, is on the coin, and I put the do I created a graphic to put the Doja the Doge dog in uh, in a, a aviator's cap and goggles, and that's what I put on my website so that you can click that if you want to donate some Doge coin to to Grimner. I think he's still uh, taking that in. Well, it's making a reoccurrence. It's been kind of sitting there quiet. This little Doge coin, the little Doge that could, uh, it's been sitting there. Well, I, we finally get to we get to hear from the guy who made that. And he gives some warnings, and I want you to hear it. It's not about not using technology. It's not understanding your vulnerabilities from it. So there we have the point. The future is going into this thing, and yet it's full of vulnerabilities. The people who made the coin are hesitant. And this, the, it says the title here, The Man Who Dodged the Dogecoin. This is the, the creator who, one of the creators who backed off. He got involved and then stepped out. One of the few who do this. It's the crypto joke coin that keeps on giving. Characterized by company mascot Doge, the Jap a Japanese dog breed Shiba Inu, Dogecoin started out in 2013 as a tongue-in-cheek repose to Bitcoin and the crypto world generally. But co-founders Jackson Palmer and Billy Marcus also came up with something rather clever, a digital currency that was more accessible, usable, and altogether a lot more fun than Bitcoin. It, and this is not a promotion of, of, of the Dogecoin, but I guess we could talk about it too. As long as you understand, this is the Wild West, and it may or may not be here, uh, and it may not be bring, may or may not bring vulnerabilities. Like today, I couldn't get into the chat because uh, the I, IP for some reason has been blocked. That could be my wallet. What's in your wallet? Well, I don't know because I can't get to it. Just because somebody somewhere decided there was some problem, and when I went and checked it out real quick, it isn't really, well, I guess it might be a problem in the, in the structure of things, but it's not a problem. It's not like there's a malware coming through the IP or, or anything. It just happens to be the way a proxy has been set up. And so now I don't get my Dogecoin if I had it. I don't get my social credit. I don't get anything. Why? Because someone blocked the IP. That's your future world. You start getting into this, and uh, Palmer kind of addresses that, but he... Uh, also, uh, they go on and they talk about how this uh, thing this works. It was uh, also an armed with a massive coin supply, thus ensuring that each unit of Doge, D-O-G-E, uh, would also carry a low price with correspondingly low transaction fees. So, I don't need to read more about it. It's an interesting little thing. I found favor in it just because it was a cool idea. I thought it, the, the joke that they brought it out was exactly the point of it. And uh, that I was hoping maybe people would pick on to that. But let's go down to what I think Palmer says here. The, the guy who created these a crypto coin that was slightly different and slightly uh, identifying for the future what should happen for most of us to use instead of it being uh, being hydra, high graded because I can see the technology was going to be, uh, it will be high graded. Again, whoever owns the blockchain for that, whatever you call it, is the master of that universe. Uh, you're watching how the government's trying to come to terms with that. And you're watching how they're hesitant in some spots and not in others. And so uh, let me read to you what uh, I think it's Palmer says here. I think that it's still an unproven paradigm, these cryptocurrencies. A lot of people have uh, this blind faith that it's the future of everything. And I think it's important to have some skepticism there. He also points to the uh, materialistic attitude that's been cultivated as a reason why the industry finds it's itself rampant with speculators but virtually no users. I think because it has money attached to it, it also incentivizes people to be less reflective on its actual use because they don't want to devalue their investment. Well, while a lot of what Palmer believes tends to fall into the philosophical pile, he does have some forthright views on who this new technology should be kept away from. The bankers. These guardians of institutional investors' purse strings are a menace in waiting, says Palmer, a menace with a $100 billion war chest if, if recent estimates were to be, are to be believed. What, is, what it really is is a re-centralization of some of the stuff that Bitcoin was trying to decentralize, right? If we get to a point where the money distribution in Bitcoin looks fairly identical to that of the traditional Wall Street banks, then what have we uh, really achieved? And so the, he goes on and has some more uh, discussion. The point is, is that he's, made, he's, he's telling you, the guy who, who understands this far more better than me, enough to create something in it. 
He's telling you this is not a paradigm that's proven. It's not something you want institution to grab a hold of. My view was that's exactly what they were, what it, uh, the overall reason to bring it into being and getting used was, even if it was just for investment, was to get people to use the, get familiar with the idea. He's saying this is a bit of a, this is a bit of a problem. He is telling you to, as I was telling you, the only thing I can see this could be good if you privatize this and keep it completely outside of the system. Don't go seeking SEC approval which all the ICOs, the companies that are coming up to try and make something out of this, are trying to do. Why? They're all tied to Wall Street. And so there's a, this, I found this, uh, his concurrence was without, you know, I don't think I know too much about this. A lot of people, uh, you know, I have no really uh, force and effect in people who are into it too deep, uh, any deep at all, to try and say, watch out. I said, this is the Wild the West. If you approach this as the Wild West, I kind of don't have a problem with that. But I don't know where it goes into the future, and I don't know if I see the, the future as a decentralized condition once it's regulated or authorized. And then it outlaws the rest. And so, again, will be a word to the wise. Look forward to hit into, into the future of it. I think it's a great tool. I think it's a great way to transfer um, wealth that people, not well, the yeah, asset, if you will, just value from place to place. It, it seems to work the function of a basic, it doesn't work any much different than the as money we use right now with the fiat. Except it's not tangible, and if you trust, if you can trust that little bit to move it into something tangible, well, then I don't see a real problem with it. And he says here, uh, stop your materialistic use of it and just use it as the intangible uh, mode of transfer. And that's apparently not as exciting to people. But as soon as you get that mode of transfer put into a re into having to be licensed or a approved, I, I think you've defeated the whole point. And and I've always had a problem with this idea. It never, never has made sense to me ever, no matter how good I like the idea and how, I mean, I could use the ability to have uh, value put through a digital account because I don't deal in any, much of anything else. So that would be like my only, my only ability to get value uh, moved around and do things. But my problem about the so-called decentralized, as soon as you see it's on a ledger, and I don't care how well you, you, you pass it around P2P it, it's still on a ledger, and now we've proven, shown it's not de decentralized. It's central to the ledger, isn't it? And I've heard, heard people come back to me and say that that's not, you don't understand. Well, maybe I don't understand, but that's still the point. You have a ledger. <laughs> it's central to that. And so, word to the wise, I'd like, to, I'd like to see something break through, someone break through and make this thing independent, non-dependent on the system at all. Stop looking toward investments. Start looking at it as a medium and start using it that way, and I think we're going to go down a better path. I guess to tell you, I'm not against it. I'm just against where I see it leads based on a bunch of people's whims about what they think is going on. In other words, you can't look at this and say, oh, end the Fed, and then go invent a crypto coin. It has, they're totally not relevant to each other. Well, your impetus might be, but it's, it ends up being in practice not completely the wrong reason to, uh, to do something. Because it was, in the Fed was a wrong imp impression anyway. I, I don't know if anybody thinks that through too, too much. Especially so quickly. And then not offer the alternative. And then if they do offer some, it's just so trite what's offered. We're, we're in a really complex condition. It's kind of interesting. I'm not saying it's not there to do, but for those people that want to make a complaint, they better have a solution. And excuse me, I just violated the, the rule, didn't it? Because the solution is really not what, something we could do. It's something that we just use. It's a tool that helps mitigate problems more than solving anything. And what's the problem with the solution? But anything we hear today as a solution isn't. It's really an answer to an outcome, promoting an outcome that you didn't make. And so we, Doge, the Doge man, he's uh, saying caution. I'm asking you to listen to the Doge man. If you don't listen to what I'm saying, I understand it's like going to uh, Vegas at this point. You might as well just, if you can gamble to lose, then fine. If you can't, uh, maybe certainly don't put your eggs in one basket and maybe even not even to the level that you would uh, reasonably 10%, whatever. Uh, be careful. Uh, uh, again, be willing to lose it for whatever reason. Whatever reason, it's, to my mind, too many surface uh, vulnerabilities to a lot of this to rely on any of it. And we're going to find out that's coming up. 
Uh, the proof of the pudding, we heard before, India tried to implement this. They tried to mess around with the money. They messed up their people. The people suffer, but they couldn't really bring on the cashless society. Here's another story. Backlash against war on cash uh, reaches a bank, the Bank of Canada. So this, uh, this crypto thing, this blockchaining, is deemed a war on cash to go cashless. They're finding out that cashless cannot be uh, really achieved. A cashless society could have adverse collective outcomes. How many words do we need right there that we uh, know? This is a suggestive of a brain that has been wired to speak, uh, to future speak and double speak. Uh, collective outcomes. What do you say? You don't want to do these outcomes. You say, and that's all to create and force the collective. But they're finding cashless is for all the promotion that Bitcoin was making it anonymous, which we found it isn't, they're saying in this article that cash is is anonymous. They're about as anonymous as we have and have something tangible. Now, there's an interesting article on the back side of what, the back side behind the woodshed. The, uh, make the switch, folks. The, uh, the, the, the Doge man uh, says, watch out. No, this is not necessarily the panacea. Everybody thinks it is. You know, we need to take a, a critical look at that, but here's the story that kind of backs that up with all this Knowledge about nonsense going to cashless, they have problems. And I want you to know about these because in the future you want to stay cashless even in fiat. This is how bad it's gone. We're looking and we're de decrying fiat because it wasn't, it was as money and not money. They're going to something worse and everybody's embracing that. And I want you to understand there's a knowledge out right now that shows you and facts and, and evidence of reality that show that doing this stuff isn't necessarily any good. And you need to know that when you are confronted with this, these choices or these impositions. You have to be able to assert why it's not the way it should be doing, why it's wrong what they're doing. Find your point, your place inside of these things that says that you're the difference that why they can't do what they do. And if you know these things, if you know these exceptions that sit there, you become the one voice eventually that keeps that, Plausible that that um, excuse me not plausible that uh, function for everyone open that needs to let me offer this again in the microcosm of the miner the miner who knows the law that says that the authority to close a, ha a road in the forest is pre precluded by this little black and white sentence that the uh, so-called authority in the forest service cannot close that one out keeps that road open for everyone like that. These are the, you're looking for your exceptions in the world, and one of the exceptions will be that you have a freedom of communication with people, whether that be market, whether that be money, or whether that be natural, that they cannot, uh, they, it's a vested right to you that they can't infringe. Therefore, they have to, this new, new world order has to make a provision for you. They're telling you now. Although I see a couple of uh, problems here. They're trying to also weed their way in, uh, as I told you before, Lagarde. They're going to work on the problems, and they'll solve the problems so they do bring it on. But you need to remember what these are. Let me go through a, qu a couple points. In recent months, a slew of political and financial institutions have raised concerns about the march toward a cashless economy. These are people, uh, government, uh, people inside the system saying, cashless, we need the, we need the, the mechanism of cashless. And here's what they say about it. The ECB warned that a phase out of cash could pose a serious risk to financial systems. So they're work, working to worry about their bottom line. De this is for the removal of cash. Depending too heavily on electronic payment systems could expose uh, financial systems to catastrophic failures to, in, in the event of power outages or cyber attacks. The European Commission has also backed off its war on cash. I'm kind of interested that they even called it the war on cash is it to acknowledge that that's actually been going on. Uh, second point, the People's Bank of China announced that all businesses in China that are not e-commerce must resume accepting cash or risk being investigated and cautioned businesses against hyping the cashless idea when promoting non-cash payments. And listen to what they're saying here. It's very powerful uh, in also exposing a dynamic within people's uh, interaction. Uh, number uh, three here is this. In Sweden, one of the most cashless societies, the central bank and parliament have spoken out in support of cash. Cities too, at another point, cities too 
have spoken out, including Washington, D.C., whose city council introduced a bill that sought to ban restaurants and retailers from not accepting cash or charging a different price to customers depending on the method of payment they use. I, I found this astounding, and I would uh, just do a quick analysis. The word including here, I would ask uh, anybody listening, if, do you know of any other city that's done this? And if we can't find another city, or it was not that city was not known to this author, I'm going to show you when you read the sentence here, or the sentence part, cities too often spoken out, including Washington, D.C., when you analyze that, the word including means it's the only city that did it on the word including. Otherwise, it would probably use the word such as. Okay, so when you read including, it may or may not be preclusive of other things. Uh, the patriots kind of go off and say it's preclusive always. That's not the truth. But in this case, there's, they're showing one, and the fact of which you'd go out and say, are there any other cities? And we can prove that the word including, in this case, is exclusive to this town, this city. It may be the only one that done it, but they did it. What, is that, what did that speak to right there? That they have to make a law that keeps the, requires that you can pay in cash and then requires that you can't be penalized for paying in cash. It's, it's pretty astounding. It's exactly what I've been telling you. We're, gonna, we're coming to a time in the world. Well, I don't know how we got here. It doesn't make any sense. It's a lot of work. But if you want something to be done, you're now going to have to make a law to make sure it gets done. Lawlessness is now everywhere. There's no limitation to this. So you now have to make a, a law that says you can, you have to accept cash, and you have to accept, uh, you can't penalize for the use of cash. And what I find the first part of that is amazing because the FRN is for all debts, public and private. When, when, where's the authority to to deny the use of cash? And then where's the authority there to then penalize the use of it? That they have to make a law of it. Exactly what I've been telling you is coming down in our world anymore. I don't understand it, but that's the fact. Do I like it? Absolutely not. I mean, look how much work it is for us. And because we're all crickets to all of this stuff, can't, can't raise a finger one to write a letter anywhere and then be persistent to follow through on point of what you're supposed to do. No, we'd rather com uh, complain. Oh, it's if end the Fed. Stop. Stop. Look at the reality of the world. Look at what we have. Look, we have to start rolling our, our sleeves up. Anyway, so I'm, they're talking about to get to the Bank of Canada. The, now it's the Bank of Canada's turn to sound the alarm in paper. It's, is a cashless society problematic was a document they wrote. Is a cashless society pro problematic? They're looking at this. They're looking at the bottom line, folks. They're looking at, and in some regard, looking out for all of you. How will you, when this stuff starts falling apart, how will you interact? When serious problems happen, really, nature's out there, and it will affect us. Giant meteor 2020 could happen. It might happen before. It might happen just after. It could happen. What Carrington 2.0, complete EMP from the sun, destroy all your infrastructure, could happen. In fact, we're in a time when that could happen. To, we're, our, our shields are down as much as they probably will be right now. That could happen. What are you going to do without a tangible source of, of, a, of a medium of exchange? These are not light. We, we, we're, we're pampered on this. These are not light questions. Is the cashless society problematic? They're actually asking. I wonder, and I look at this stuff, I say, well, is cashless, we were told it's coming, but is it not going to? Come on. Well, if you read closer on this thing, you look at what they're analyzing, you'll find at least two of the points that they in inject are things that they think they can fix, removing this problem. How they think they're actually going to fulfill it, I'm not asking and analyzing. I'm saying there's people working on their problem, just like Lagarde said. She's the World Bank guru, remember. This is the one how this all works as well through the, through the uh, countries. So, uh, pointing out, be careful. There's a, there's a pushback for the system about cashless. Now, that's also a support for fiat. And so my view on this was, well, okay, you see, look at our problem, too, and why it reinforces what I've been saying as well. If they want, they know that tangible cash is a problem for them and a threat, why'd they move from gold and silver for us in the United States? See, gold and silver, we didn't protect ourselves by maintaining gold and silver. They know they make a they make a killing, if you will, uh, maybe literally in the system of the way the military industrial complex comes down with financing. They can make a little killing, but they make it on the devaluation and debasing of this did this uh, fiat 
tangible fiat because all that value is behind the scenes. Now, we were supposed to, their problems today with it moving on to the next digital realm uh, is the, our problem when we gave up uh, gold and silver value in our coins. And so all you want to end the Fed, all you got to do is to end the Fed as far as its force and effect generally on you privately is stop using its product. Get back into gold and silver coin. I don't know why this is such a hard deal. Okay, so I don't know, maybe no silver bullet answer here, but there's a, if we were to trans, uh, migrate back, we wouldn't have inflation as much, well, we'd have a little bit of problem, a little bit. Uh, and there's market manipulation problems, a little bit. But we would have a more stable economy uh, system uh, medium for us. That's how we've come up as people all in, through all history was through these more substantial forms. We are substantial beings. We need substantial forms in, in our, in our, in our uh, dealings. And so this is, again, we watch the system of the tangible in fiat having a problem going into the the digital virtual, uh, you know, non-existent type of idea. Uh, they're having a problem. We were we should have had the same, um, we could almost make a list for the same problems that we have going, we had when they we let them take away our the substance of our money. Our money. The species. And so, just an interesting little, for me, it's interesting to read acknowledgments to watch uh, the new group, the new gang in town is now fearful of the new coming on, but the new, the new coming on is detrimental. The, their fiat and their new system are the ones that they have to protect against on their bottom line and how they're going to exploit you. See, they don't like the fact that they can't exploit you anymore that way uh, because it makes things more efficient. And it takes it out of any con local control because then you can do all this control you think is decentralized. No, the control goes right to the owner of the blockchain uh, in the digital self uh, realm. Uh, we have the same two problems now when it moves over to that. We have, we've had this problem always. And we never stepped up. We never did our own analysis on what that was doing to us, we the people. And so this is how we, you know, we were talking last year, or last week, excuse me, on the hack. Thank you for all the folks that went to Speaker and lots of downloads there and all the downloads I've been seeing here and there. The, the quickly as the numbers, when I bring all those pa pages up, I've got to do entries in some of them. Um, like the Spreaker, I have to go in. I got to see that quite a few people plugged in there. Thank you for going there. And anybody listening on Spreaker uh, right now, thank you for being there uh, and uh, coming later. I appreciate it. Uh, the, uh, but getting back into this, the, we as a people didn't maintain our republic, if I can say it this way. We didn't maintain what we needed. This is an example of what the fiat people are in trouble with. They, they don't like this uh, because it's going to take away some control. I'm saying let's look at that and give us give a, a lesson for why we need to refocus and re-put energy into distancing ourselves from that system. It's okay for them. It was never okay for us. Moving it along to one more step certainly can't be any better for us. Now, they'll sell it to you because they got to work on your fallen nature about how the, they like to play the game of let's make, let's make this thing new and, and exciting and give you a, 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 pro, a materialistic investment profit. But that's not, that's what this guy, the Doge creator, is saying. You know, this is not, we want to keep this away from the banks. If, we, if it goes anywhere, if it has a possibility, we've got to keep away from the institutionalization. That's what wants to happen. But we also have to keep the, the value for us. It, it, almost counterintuitively, we made a whole lot of these things, so it had a low value, but it would be used. It would be used in a currency. Some uses, remember, those things in movement in money are what takes the value, or what makes the value. And look in the future now here as the countries that the United States is now berating and beating down and sanctioning, they're having no no confidence in the in the Federal Reserve note. That lack of their use of that, that medium is what's going to start the fall of it. Anything that's a currency that's not current, not being used, it falls into disuse. It has no value. So that's another another way. But okay, so there's some real problems. I think we can look at this and say what our problem was when we when we went from gold and silver coin. I, I think the same. I don't. I think the analysis is the same, and it should give us the impetus to start really focusing back on getting an independent, tangible system that was more conducive to why we are here, what we do, why we need to do it that way. Amongst ourselves. Moving over from certain plagues, that, some things that plague us, <laughs> and certain 
ways that we can avoid it and the kind of the information that we're given and the things that are not said and we've got these government regulators wanting to regulate out the ICOs of Bitcoin and these uh, crypto, excuse me, cryptocurrencies, all these other things. We have the warning from someone who was in it. Uh, we've moving in now to the, the, the our, our financial health. We move into our physical health. Uh, and uh, there's a question now on the horizon coming uh, of a problem that some of you may or may not have heard of. Uh, U.S. doctors are baffled as a rare spinal disease spreads across the 22 states. And this was a kind of a concern. I want to just let people know. I don't know where they don't even understand how this is starting, so pay attention. This is uh, the system and regulation. They'll say they're regulating to your benefit, but you find out it's not to yours. It's somebody's bottom line. And I think a lot of the thing about the ICOs is it's coming too fast for the Bitcoin. The health of the financial markets is at stake. So you also see in that second article the backlash is that it's coming too fast for even them. And there's some fundamental problems with it, and they know that. But here we have regulators that will do things, and we think it's good for us. But here we have the licensed doctors who are baffled. Why are licensed doctors baffled? Because we don't know everything, that's for sure, just on the front end of it. But U.S. health officials have issued a warning about a rare condition. Remember, folks, I told you when you start hearing about rare or novel or single or never happened before, you better pay attention. And here's rare. Not single, but rare. Not supposed to really be happening too much. A United States officials have issued a warning about a rare condition that attacks the nervous system and spinal cord after 62 new cases of little-known disease were confirmed across 22 states. A little-known disease. Wow. Where was that fabricated, folks? Uh, the Centers of Disease uh, Control, they call themselves, and Prevention, this is the Communicable Disease Center, this is the one that communicate their disease to you, uh, took the steps to warn about symptoms of acute flaccid myelitis. Myelitis, excuse me. AFM is what they're designating. After doctors recorded a jump in cases this year, in 2018, the federal watch, health watchdog confirmed 62 instances of the disease, which causes limb weakness and can paralyze suffer, sufferers. The illness has been compared to the polio and West Nile viruses. The number is nearly double the amount observed in 2017 when 33 AFM cases were found in the U.S. In the CDC's health warning organization said the uh, late, at least 65 other patients are being assessed after they displayed symptoms of the malady. The rare AFM, AFM condition mostly presents in children. But so far, a cause and consistent patient pathogen has eluded doctors. Do you think we have enough here to even make a blind a blind shot about what might be the cause? Do you think? Let me give you a check here. A rare, sudden onset weakness, illness has been compared to polio and West Nile viruses, mostly in children, but the cause or consistent pathogen has eluded doctors. And the average age of patients is four. You, you don't think we could take that list and go find something that's going on to patients and around average age of four and find some potential causative factor that maybe the CDC doesn't want to acknowledge something that they fully know is a problem? You think maybe we could focus? Just maybe. Instead of being confused, you think they could tell us in the story they believe that vaccines might be the cause because that is a, com a common denominator, if not the only common denominator. You think we could get that from these people? And I'm saying that you don't. Do I have to say to finish the sentence? If you don't, what's up, folks? What are you being told here? I mean, I, I, I think of this stuff, I go, why are we have, not having the uh, proper outcry? We have a lot of complainers, but why aren't we having the proper facts presented, to pull together and presented? And then dog them with it. 
So you're talking about a disease that's hurting little kids, little goats. Your babies are being affected. They are claiming, all the certified ones are claiming uh, they can't have a clue, and they won't tell you that they're even looking in the proper places. That on two seconds, excuse me, uh, it took me, okay, ten seconds to pull together the list of points in that article to say, wait a minute, I think I have at least a common denominator. Why didn't you talk about you looking at that? Why? Because it's the program. They don't want you to know there's, poten- there's pr- likely problems with those that their vaccine policies. So if you don't look, how are you going to know? There's nothing forcing them to look. And this is where I tell you that's what you have to change. Those of you that are interested, you want to look at your grandchildren going into this problem? 62 cases, there's six. There's twice as many coming. Do I have to go say, go to the vaccine court to tell you that there's known harm that's been compensated to say these things cause this stuff? Is this the cause of this? I'm not saying that. But do you, do you think the story could at least point to a potential causation? Even one? Based on the facts that they present? Are there others? Are there likely could be. I don't know. I didn't. That didn't hit my mind until when I first saw this one, and they're not even talking about it. It's kind of like I hit my problems. You give me the common denominators of a problem, and I'll look at it, and I said, let's go for the one answer that seems to answer most of it right now. We'll start there. You think that might be a good place to start? It's immediate, isn't it? I mean, if we find that out, we get to stop doing that. But guess what? See, they have that little out for themselves. Little out is it doesn't matter that 120 or 150 kids, little goats, are going to get maimed if it saves the rest of the herd, which actually we're finding it doesn't do. But that's what they claim. And so we sit as crickets while our little ones are being wasted away now. To me, rare isn't much more different than novel. That means it's been fact created, came out of a test tube. It came from an injection somewhere. Can't prove it, but that's if I was an investigator and I was investigating this as an immediate crime, I think I'd have a suspect to go investigate. I guess I can say it that way. What do you think? You think that could be? And I, again, I'm just a, I don't even know what my adjectives are here. Uh, just blown away that people don't want to respond more. Uh, there's a way to address a lot of this. It takes a little bit of work. Uh, some cases are easier than others. Uh, some uh, some obstructions are more difficult than others. I still believe uh, get enough people on certain objects, uh, subject matters, that uh, we can move this thing along. And one of my uh, becoming um, an annoyance to me more than anything else. I keep talking behind the woodshed and what really has to be done, and I don't really hear any feedback that any of it's going on. And then we hear a bunch of complaints why the government keeps going on, and big pharma did this, and bio did that, and government corruption does this, and you're the one who's allowing it. Uh, okay, before I get into that, how do we do that? I said, well, you have administrative side. This is an administrative world. Uh, it's not supposed to be as completely administrative as it is, and we've been kind of having a discussion on the Internet and Twitter a bit about the uh, all of a sudden now a separation of, uh, ch- uh, separation of powers has now popped up. Well, guess what, folks? That was what one of the impetuses for our lawsuit in 2013 with the mining district against the, the people of the state and the implementers of the, of the method. Uh, they they want to commingle. They want to uh, they be derelict in their inherent power within each branch to check other branches. Well, now this concept is finally coming to the surface. There's no check and balance within the system. It, pe- it seems, but you are one. So when I hear complaints, and then I, I or I hear people that complain and whine and then only do the wrong thing, I wonder who I'm dealing with sometimes. And, and so the district supplied a comment to a rule. To give us standing, but what I, I look at it a little bit different. I look at it in the due process side. I'm not one to complain about the rules until I can qualify that it was supposed to be applicable to me. And when the notice comes in, it says it's applicable to me, but the law says it's not supposed to be applicable. I declare uh, for the, on the record that that notice in the Federal Register was a fraud to assert that it could do what it says. Now, what have I done? I'm not, atta- I'm not quibbling over the minutia of what the rule says. I'm saying before, before I can respond, essentially is what we say at the end, before we can respond, we need a non-fraudulent notice. If, I'm gonna, if, I, if you're going to say that you did, gave us due process on the administrative side, what's due process? Simply 
reduced to four points. Notice of a, of a thing, opportunity to respond to a thing, a time uh, within and to which uh, to respond to that subject matter thing, and a place. And if you look at the Federal Register, they, they tell you all that. But they, they give you this summary, this notice. They, you answer into that without challenging the, the correctness of the summary and the notice itself for what it's doing. You agree that they have the authority over it. How, how, why is this so hard to understand? You attack the due process. I've told you this behind the woodshed out of numbers of times. The, one of the only things we may have left right now is that due process, the, this oppressor, the oppressor, the repressor, however you folks want to make it, you all make a quibble of this. Uh, the, uh, the occupation that's on us at this point, even if it's supposed legitimate and constitutional administrative, uh, they ha give you the answer uh, if you were to just uh, engage it. If I hear whining over actual action, uh, do I like the action and having to do it? No, but it's, it's necessary. Uh, we, I didn't, I don't accept uh, having to answer a comment that's fraudulent, so I'm going to call it out. I'm answering to the due process failure, though. I'm not getting into wax eloquent about how well I can out logic and rationale all these people. No, your notice is pretty fraudulent right there. It said you could do something you can't. And here's why. And then we did something more and better in the administrative uh, addressment of a rule change, a suggestion that they need something more consistent with another rule. Well, we gave them how that rule would be noticed correctly. And so we just didn't whine. We analyzed the condition, and we gave them what looks to be the answer in law, the thing that they're evading, evading, not avoiding, evading. Someone who's going to write a fraudulent notice, you know you're dealing with the devil. You might as well call it out, but the proper way. You know, getting into how do we stop all this, the doctors that do this, and they're all the licensees and stuff, they're baffled, they're baffled, they don't want to talk about something that a, a, the layman can pick up real quick and say, wait a minute, you have at least that as a culprit. Why aren't you investigating that suspect? Why? Because that's the problem. Uh, their pro that's the problem, and that problem, uh, that problem is their plan against us. And so if you're not there to say that, they get away with it. What did I say before? It's in the House Delegation, House Delegates Rules in the, uh, under the Bar Association. We're going to do all this stuff as, where appropriate. And I've told you that's the code for where we get away with it. And that includes you complaining and then giving up. As long as you give up, they win. They get to, that's appropriate then. Civil action asked judge to order FDA to name high-risk foods as mandated. And so this is a, here's what you have to do now. This is the, the, waiting on, a F, on an agency who won't do what it's supposed to do, that Congress mandated it must do. You have the law, the executive, telling the, uh, excuse me, you have the legislature telling the executive uh, that there's a law that they have to follow, and this is mandated. And uh, the failure of the executive to fulfill can be enjoined, can be ordered to continue, to finish, to conclude, to fulfill. How many of you are doing that? Well, there's a group here. If you didn't know how to do it, here, there's a group that shows you how to start doing it. Whether I'm not even like, analyzing this, whether I agree with it or not. I'm just saying, here's what happens. They were supposed to do, I think it's a Food Security Act of some, oh, is that Food Modernization? Remember that? We talked about that behind the woodshed. Food Safety Modernization Act. The, the agency that's supposed to protect you has failed to identify so-called high-risk foods. Now, you even know, even that list is going to be based on nonsense, but they, they haven't even been able to do the first list. And so there's a group of people, I think two groups are by this story, that underneath that act of the Food Safety Modernization Act, which is all part of this food security nonsense that we talked about, I think it was 2000 and, well, what year was that, 2010 or 11? And they had five or six laws that were coming. I said, this is all the institution of the sustainable development. And it's going to cost you all more. Uh, small, And they're attacking small business through it as well. Now, they come underneath modernization. I told you that's the word problem. But you see, that's not what it's about. That's why they're not working really quick. It's not like something they, they, they took the baton from Congress and said, great, we get to save the people. No, they've got to be careful on this list on what they call high risk. They have lots of problems to do that. So they've been dragging their feet. Again, the bottom line. Two San Francisco Bay Area activist organizations that previously pressured the FDA about keeping the food safety modernization rulemaking on schedule are again pushing for the agency to meet the act's mandates. No silver bullets here, folks. You still got to keep on it called persistence. 
Do I like this? Do I like telling you this is a need? Absolutely not. Do I uh, relish the fact that we have to engage this? Absolutely. i got other things to do. But I don't. Because this is necessary to understand how they're poisoning you. The lack of addressing the FDA allows them to do the other things, and the, F uh, the CDC piles that on and hides underneath these protections. The failures to do certain things, the things that are done wrong, the uh, looking through some uh, some emails, excuse me, some uh, links that were provided to me to do some checking. I think it was through Twitter. Uh, the the things that are going on behind the scenes in order to evade their duty has to be checked. But you have to have a, a thought in your brain. You have to have a word in your mouth. Then you have to reduce it down to the forms they understand, the way they understand. The FDA's failure to implement FSMA's critical food safety regulations by the statutory deadlines is an abdication of the agency's fundamental responsibilities, quote, quoting the civil complaint filed by the Center of Food Safety in San Francisco and the Center for Environmental Health in Oakland. Now, I really hesitate here. I don't know these two groups. And I don't know if they're using this as a stalking horse or not. What I'm saying is you're getting the example of how it's done to check the harm of dereliction that's been happening in this country. When I hear across the board, what do we do about it? Oh, we can't do anything. Oh, the judiciary has to answer. Oh, the judiciary, what was it, fortitude. We got judicial. No, it's all a, cor a corrupt system. You can't give it to them. So you have to do this in a slightly different way. You have to exercise what you have in ways that doesn't allow them to say have a say. What, what did I say before? We said you didn't give us a notice to respond. The notice was fraudulent. We then set the proof for that. Now, they have to answer to that. I can't, I can't predict the future. But if that answer don't come back right, they've, they've messed up. Now, we don't even have to answer to the rule. See, what you may, not, may or may not understand, those of you that followed the 228 for the minors, this happened uh, quite a few years ago. And we learned, I told you, I think I did tell you, that we learned that the uh, Small Business Administration um, Department called Advocacy, that's its name, Advocacy, has an oversight over all rulemaking. And, and they're supposed to over, oversee how these rules are going to inter impact uh, small businesses. And we found out that they have a they have the veto if it doesn't work over any rulemaking, and so we invoked that authority in them. They went and did it. We just said, "Here, you need to you need to go look at this because they've messed up." So it's not like we're there's a, the mechanisms that you can find to help aid you in doing these things to cut out these bureaucrat bureau rats working your life into the ground. The silence of which allows it. So this group is coming and saying, listen, there was a mandate to do something, FDA. Why aren't, why aren't you doing it? You're doing all this other stuff. Why aren't you doing what you're mandated to do? And then they will go on. Moreover, the agency's unlawful withholding is putting millions of lives at risk, continued risk, for contracting foodborne illnesses contrary to the Congress's, Congress's commands. This lawsuit therefore seeks to require FDA to complete the high-risk food actions FSMA requires by court-established deadlines. You see, these agencies thumb their nose at the judiciary. So what's the fortitude that they can give? This is the problem of the, the, the failure of check and balances, that people need to come and, and be that check and balance. Two groups are doing this. You say, well, let them do it. I don't think that's good enough myself. Uh, this is just an example. How many more are out there that need to be done that are, don't have someone picking it up? And I know that's a fact because I saw that when we were looking at 2013 building up to our lawsuit. I'm looking at the ledge, all the bills, thousands of bills going through. We had to keep track of all of them to see whether or not we needed to respond to any of them. And there was tons of things that went through that nobody responded to. In fact, the couple uh, we, that did go through, we didn't, it was just so much work. I was doing the authorship. I could get to all of them that we needed to respond to. Luckily, it, by the end, it didn't matter because we'd, I'd identified what was going on anyway. Remember the money, follow the money, it finally came through. So the last two or three, or two I think it was, we didn't, didn't matter because we had the record so stuffed full of stuff anyway, and it was all consistent. The missing two was uh, just a... It was almost, I could use it as a thing. They shotgunned us so bad, uh, they didn't allow for any any input. 
part of the, part of the method. So again, being in it, you get to make up, make up, you get to see and witness the styles of crime that happen to us. If you don't engage it, you can't. If you don't engage it, you don't have a say. It's called the, the standing problem I keep telling you about. Just make a complaint. Simply addresses a decent point. And once you do that, you can go look at all the other points. And if no one else moves, you get to move with yours and all the other points that look good. In this case, it's not, it's not so hard. The agency's just not doing what it's mandated to do. It's a powerful problem. Now, I think there's a different action here on top of this that can happen. I'm not going to say it. The point is, is it doesn't matter until you get involved and you start listening then to me again with your new ears and you start to hear uh, this. I've also mentioned it before, but I won't do it here. I'm just trying to get people to get the simple stuff, the really simple. Just send a letter. Get involved with this uh, if this is what important. Our lack of involvement is, is what how this whole structure has been coming on us. The administrative, uh, the 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 exploitation of the administrative side is one of the parts of the method used by the occupier. I'm talking about the new age occupier, the modernization, the post, why do they, they both speak out of two, postmodern and modernized. I told you this problem years ago. How come if we're so postmodern they want to modernize? No one catches this stuff. And this is them. And this is essentially how you identify them to go stop them. Why are they dragging their feet? Find that out. But apparently it's not good enough at this point because we see there's a court-established deadline that they miss. Now what? you got to research more to go figure out what more to do. Maybe these guys aren't doing it right. Is the other thing that keeps occurring to me. They're there, but are they doing it correctly to protect you? See, we hand our responsibility over to others. And you can't, I just tell you up front, you can't handle all the problems, but you can handle one, I'm sure, and thousands and millions of us can handle others. And those of us that choose because of uh, our interests are choosing the same, we can bind together to help each other. It's no different than we do in the mining district. We come together, we can work through problems that we've had every uh, once a month, and we can then exchange ideas on how that's supposed to work better or different or not at all or whatever. We have the the uh, the benefit, if you will, of leveraging our own our own skills, and this is one of the complaints we have. Oh, we the uh, FDA, the government does what it wants. Well, here's the reason why. In the next story, uh, we have people attacking the FDA on one hand for not doing the mandated stuff, but the FDA uh, does something else with the DEA and the CD. All these people get together. These agency people, these agencies get together, and a federal court, a case goes before a federal court, and they side for as this is reported. A federal court sides with big pharma rules CBD has no medical value. And this is my annoyance. Where are you folks? I'm bringing the lashings a little bit right now. Where are you folks that are interested in this? That you didn't properly look at this and engage this before it got to the point that the court looked at the record and looked at what was going on. And what was the answer here? It was in the title of this, the, fort, the court sides with Big Pharma. The ramifications is that Big Pharma gets a monopoly. But why? Because when you look, go down through the story a little bit, you find out in the decision, the three-judge panel said the plaintiffs had failed to take the opportunity to comment during the DEA's rulemaking process thus nullifying the majority of their challenge to the classification. Does it say it any clearer? I don't think so. I think this says what I've been saying. Behind the woodshed, you get the principles on how it works. No standing on the charges that they brought. The ones that they did get probably were new that they could argue, at least on the face of it, that the DEA was required to do even if they didn't answer. And that's a limited, that's a limited scope of a, of interpretation. Apparently not enough, because that means that the burden's on you to show that it was meaningless what they did based on that, that uh, omission. There's a standard for all this stuff, folks. You just gotta start thinking that way. There's the answer to the story <coughs> of a story that was entitled, Federal Court Sides with Big Pharma. It didn't side with Big Pharma. It determined that there was nobody there to bring an objection to what happened. 
and the ramifications of which is CBD uh, now doesn't have the medicinal value, and ironically, there's going to be a monopolization of CBD as they move it through the system. Just what everybody complained would happen. Big Pharma will monopolize this. This is how they do it, folks. You're, again, three fingers pointing back. We're our self own self inflicted wound. We're too lazy to actually follow through with our complaints. It drives, really try and drives me nuts. I'm getting, again, I don't have the adjective. I'm just getting to a point where I just don't know anymore about putting up with any of it. And I keep focusing my attention on where it seems to work better, where we seem to have some function, where those few people that actually move it, that's where we go. That's where I put my more and more and more of my energy. I don't even have the, I've, I've lost my interest to discuss this stuff with people, especially the ones that think they know what's going on. It's just nonsense, claptrap in my mind. And that's what it sounds like in my mind. I can't even address it. And it's hard to even work it through to begin uh, addressing it because everybody knows so much. And yet knowing I said a thing means nothing because you have to actually put it in practice. You have to actually go out and do something. Trump administration seeks comments on marijuana reclassification. Oh, here's an opportunity for you folks. Another one. The federal government wants your input on whether marijuana should be reclassified under global drug treaties to which the United States is a party. But why would they do that, folks, if they've already just told you CBD oil has no medicinal value? What did I tell you about the legislation of legalization in the states appeared to me to be the legalization of monopoly to, to actually uh, to cut out the CBD type oil? Aren't you seeing that today? It's exactly what I said. That's what this is about. Out on the one hand, the one side of their mouth, they talk about, oh, it's no medicinal value. On the other one, they're inquiring whether or not they should reduce it, uh, reduce the, uh, remove it from the drug treaties. And I say, is that the only way you can do this? I don't think so. But that's not for me to say until some of you get involved and say, well, we tried that way. What other ideas did you have? You don't even know the most easiest thing to do yet. I mean, really, I'm get, I get annoyed here, folks, just the more I think about it. The federal government wants your input. You just lost CBD. There's a way, I think, to get at it. I don't, I'm not even versed in this stuff. I just see the, 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 this, the, new, the, the notice to us tells me stuff is up there to do. Where's the, where's the, the comments that you need just to give you a, a standing to go into, you want to know so much? I want you to know so much. I want you to know so much in the capacity that you can defend this whole thing for everybody. Because apparently no one else can. All you know-it-alls. Specifically, and this is important about this, you always have to listen to what they're asking for. And like I told you, we just told them what you're asking for is a fraud. And here's why. And here's what this thing ought to say if you, that was, if, if, if the point of your intention is true. I just gave you the form of a, of a 10 page, res, a 12 page response we just said. That was it. it took 12 pages to lay out what? To lay out our case and let them know this is the subject matter comprehension we have. You go ahead and do this. You got a court case in the future, guaranteed. You continued this path. Uh, you could do that, but otherwise you just become a whiner and a, a cricket, whatever else, whatever their adjective that no one wants to hear they do while well, they know so much. Specifically now, the United, Sta the United States Food and Drug Administration, the same group that just said that CBD does not have no medicinal value, we're going to look out in the treaties and say, should we make those legal? Why? The FDA is asking pu for public comments about, quote, the abuse potential, actual abuse, medical usefulness, trafficking, and impact of scheduling changes on availability for medical use of cannabis and several other substances now under international review. Well, they just declared there is no medical usefulness. Do you think that's a failure, a fraudulent request by them in the Federal Register that you might attack and use their own case to say, why did you even put this in here? You already are foreclosing the meaningful response of your agency. Can you at least say that? Is that so hard to say? 
But there it is. They're asking you for all you CBD people just lost your medicinal value for because someone didn't answer at all. And then they didn't answer right, I can tell you that. If they would have answered, most likely they don't answer. They answer in the administrative part instead of, like I've been telling you, at least include your production rights and the grant preclusion against the government to stop you in private use of this stuff. Is that too fast for some people, what I just said? I don't, if that's the case, uh, really, I'm saying get gear up. Climb that steep hill and learn a thing or two. Actually, what you know, not your griping about it. Under current U.S. federal law as well as global drug policy, how does a global policy trump a law and then with a constitution we have and interfere with our property rights? I can't see the pathway through, which is what you talk to. But well, as global drug policy agreements, oh, well now, now we're not treaties, they're just agree agreements. A marijuana is classified as the most restrictive category of Schedule 1. At home, that means it is considered illegal and not available per, for prescription, while research on its potential benefits is high, heavily restricted. Cannabis international status means that nations or signatories of drug control treaties are not supposed to legalize it, though that hasn't stopped Canada and Uruguay from doing so. Wow. What a pathway. You can drive a truck through this so-called prohibition, can't you? If you just look at what you're looking at. Well, so what was the problem with the previous report about the monopolization? How is that even possible? Because they could if you gave them the right answer. And we're not, we're crickets. We're just, really, annoyances in my mind today. We are our own worst enemy. I don't even really know what to say about that point. I'm just thinking there was another thought I wanted to do here, and it's not coming to me. It has to do with really the lineage of this of this discussion relative to our our uh, our responses, but it's not coming to me now. It's a function. Oh, one of the okay. So let's get into this one a little bit more. Public comments on the marijuana's effects and legal status will be considered in preparing a response from the United States to the World Health Organization regarding the abuse, liability, and uh, diversion of these, these drugs. Well, now they're drugs. You see the incongruity with all these statements? This is something you really almost, I would approach it the same way as I just did the, two, the Part 228 mining regulations of the Forest Service. This is an incongruent Federal Register filing, at least if not fraud, in confusing the matters, not with, and, and with respect to, if we take respect for their finding that there was, based on a technicality, again, you throw that in, then we're looking at an agency that doesn't intend to really meaningful approach, give meaningful interpretation or approach to this. It's just an obfuscation from left to right, handing that authority over to a World Health Organization that's really no body at all. You see what I did there, folks? And so how does this even come out now? What's interesting to me is how this starts to eventuate. What people give over to other organizations instead of doing their own stuff. Now you bring up the specter of the United Nations. Why? You, you start looking at that, you'll start realizing the, the globalization thing going on at this point. And then I run and I ran across this thing from normal. N -O, uh, what, N -O -R, N -O -R -M -L, they call themselves normal. Not normal. Normal. Long-term, supposedly long-term cannabis or marijuana initiative uh, support uh, association. I was a little surprised to see this because I thought it was kind of domesticated, if you will, focused on the in internals of the United States. But they looked at this and they found favor in wanting to do this. The United States Food and Drug Administration is seeking public comments specific to whether changes ought to be re re recommended regarding the international classification of cannabis as a controlled substance. And right next to that statement is the World Health Organization and the UN logo with the doctor thing in it, uh, what they call that. I don't remember now what it's called. So you smart people there in the chat that I can't see, you, you'll have the name of that, the, the, the serpent on the staff. That's the symbol. Why are they integrating with the World Health Organization? Normal. The, the association, not being normal. The FDA says the comments will, quote, will be considered in preparing a response United, from the United States to the World Health Organization regarding the abuse, liability, and diversion of marijuana and certain other substances. 
So you are going to go through an intercessor. My view on that is I don't know, but to check, would you have a right to petition the WHO first to tell them they don't have a right to interfere with your property rights? You don't have a right to not make that important to you, and the United States has nothing to say about that. Why? Because when you get into the property law, the grantor is precluded from interfering against the whole world, even to your grant, aren't they? If you under, I'm expanding, hopefully expanding your mind right here now. This is a trespasser, and your use of production, productive use, because one of my holdings on all this has been that uh, they have never really outlawed a pr private use. Uh, you always see a commercial attachment. Why are they going over there? Because it's commerce, isn't it? In April, in response to a similar FDA request, normal NORML collected and hand-delivered over 10,000 comments, 10,000 comments to the agency calling on it to recommend and lifting of international restrictions criminalizing the plan. Remember, decriminalizing is no different. It's just lesser crime. Legalizing is no different. It moves it from criminal to administrative. Civil. So you want to non-criminalize it, non-regulate it. Un just don't touch it. Leave it alone. It's a plant. But anyway, go. normal latest comments to the FDA, normal's latest comments. I want you to pick up on how this is a failure already. This is how it's being done to you. 10,000 comments end up being normal's comment, and that's how it's treated. 10,000 equals one when it actually gets through the system. Why you are the one that has to go say why this is wrong, why what they're doing is ineffectual. And Normal's latest comments to the FDA, it opined that, quote, cannabis be removed from the International Drug Convention so that nations that wish to do so may further expand the regulation governing cannabis use, possession, production, and dispensing for either recreational or medical use. Comments will close on Wednesday, October 31st. So we have, what, 10 days or so, folks? you got to make sure your comment is there on that day by 5 o'clock. It can't be in transit. It has to be there. It's administrative time, not judicial time. I keep telling you this. Another opportunity. Let's look at that. Their comment says it opined. But what have I told you not to do? Don't bring an opinion. Bring your facts. Bring your law. And say, well, hopefully you're saying they, they either have to do something that protects you or they cannot do something that it trespasses. What did they mention in here? But use possession and production. What's in? Let me reference the mining law. We are granted exclusive possession and use and en, uh, use and enjoy or enjoyment of the entire surface of your land. Right? They have use and possession as a potential policy of the federal of the United Nations to interfere with. I'll bet Normal has some lawyers that do, l attorneys on board either also. I'll bet they do. You, they've attacked in this statement your use, possession, and production. What have I said? Your production is already granted. What, am I even talking about the efficacy of CBD as a medicinal? No, I'm saying your property rights are being violated by Normal. When you hand them the comment, because 10,000 comments equals one if it's the same comment or substantially the same comment. See, this is the administrative work, the world you have to understand. Your private comment is not a normal comment. How's that? But your private comment really has to be within the law and your rights and to say you don't have the authority to do this. Not in this country. Why? You only have that license because you also know Canada and Uruguay could care less, right? If you didn't hear it from the United States first. Isn't this just fascinating a bit, folks? Don't you think this is interesting how you look at what you're told and it's all wrong when you hear it? I'm just touching just what they read. I read a little bit more. There's tons wrong with these people under, underpinning this organization, what they want to do. Legalization was a problem. Decriminalization, it, not was, is a problem. Decriminalization is the same problem, but now it's worse because it's now cageable. You get cageable. They want to have this regulated. I'm saying reduce this to your private use. 
And I would make that distinction. If it's just one thing you want to do commerce, but you totally do not have right in our right of production. And I'm saying that notwithstanding the wheat case, I think in 1938, where the wheat farmer said they said you can't do that. I don't think the argument of gra the, the grantor preclusion being uh, stopped by his own grant ever come up into the into the uh, picture of that decision. This is your chance to bring that up for all y'all that are doing uh, cannabis. I don't know what you call it, cannabis, marijuana. You're seeing they're they're now commingling the term cannabis and marijuana. They don't care. The DEA told you that. Because no one was there to make the distinction and show it up. And the other, this is what the other one point, the other point I was going to get to regarding the other case was that this decision that they said went to Big Pharma is being viewed as an interference with the Farm Act that allows hemp, the hemp of which creates the CBD oil. I wanted to point, now that's what I forgot to tell you about on that one, because here's where I think you have another Right, those of you in hemp and CBD. There, that court case said that that Farm Act should protect it. The problem is it doesn't look like it is. So what do you do? You have the right of production. You have the right to make the CBD whether or not they think it's an extract of the illegal hemp. Now you've got two types of, hemp, uh, two types of uh, cannabis. The illegal cannabis and the legal hemp produces a CBD oil extract that ought to be protected. That's your right. You can move in equity to shut down the whole administrative side. Whether you will or not, that's maybe another point on how you present and what you present it to. What am I saying there? Watch your territorial courts versus your Article Three courts. And you're going to run into a problem there. Which I'll just tell you, give that to you. I've talked about it before. Go read the statute. You'll see it. You'll need know you have to anticipate that problem. This is also part of the dispose the destruction of our nation. We weren't vigilant to maintain that these oppressors would change things on us so so subtly. And I, as I think about it, I'm just giving you information that's applicable to any one of you that, that, in, that thought CBD oil was important. We're seeing in a couple of issues right here, the FDA wants to know why it needs to change itself on the international specter. I'm saying go to your production rights, tell them they never had the right, and then then you go back to that Farm Act and say, well, if I'm only doing hemp, this is an extract of this this plant. You don't have the right to regu out, out, regulate it out. I can enjoin you against that, and you be the case that enjoins the DEA from making the determination that it could, what your extract is as Schedule 1. It's a product of the farm, that Farm Act. It's a product of the production that you have the right to do that was granted to you by Congress, at the Congress by its grant and the and the um, presidential signature ratifying that in your patent precludes, it stops them from interfering with. That's just grant law, folks. Flesher versus Peck in, I think, 1810. That's an interesting case. I keep telling you about all this stuff. you got to go read it. I talked about it before. I think that's the case where Georgia made it a law. It was they found out there was some skullduggery inside the legislation. The court came back and said, that's the decision of the legislature. We can't unturn that. That stands. That grant stands. We can't undo it. You start seeing the power of this, now we start to see what's been we've let go by that needs to be picked back up. So getting back to normal, don't do it the way they're saying. But you have a comment right. So go to where they have the links to find what the what the Red Federal Register says. Look specifically at what they're saying. Respond specifically to that. To me, I see a ways that you at least start the point that the notice is fraudulent or uh, inconsistent at least to be able to respond to and you start from there before you move on too much further are those of you that are interested interested or not I, I guess is I, I tell you plenty of information to get started I don't know why it's so hard to write a letter but here's what you're going to be up against you have to understand the battlefield you're going to have a bunch of industry bottom liners Mutual defense uh, financial ministers that are going to come after you. And the story just hit as I'm coming on the broadcast. Marijuana impairment. Stoned drivers cause more traffic accidents in pot legal states. The Insurance Institute for Highway Safety, IIHS, found in a new study published Thursday that traffic accidents are up 6% in four states where recreational use of marijuana has been legalized. 
they're going to bring this as an impairment that says that you need to keep this Schedule 1 because it's a danger to society on this. And this is the bean counters and the mutual uh, insurance companies coming in to do their, their, ad, uh, their um, uh, oh, darn it, the words just slipped from my mind, actuarial uh, 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 modeling that, that uh, assigns a financial risk to all this. And you're going to read the next paragraph is where the real answer is. And you have to know this. They said that the use of marijuana that causes accidents up 6%. Read the next paragraph. Earlier in this week, the National Transportation Safety Board issued a press release about a, a 2017 traffic accident linked to, quote, the use of marijuana in combination with the misuse of prescription medication. Wow, in context, that's a whole different statement, isn't it? And that's what you have to understand, and that's what you put in your, uh, your your comment, and you say it may be presented that this is a, a represented that this is a, a an increase. In fact, the case reported the study. If you go find, especially if this was in that study, the study was showing that these are really the misuse of your prescription drugs, the ones you already allow. And then you, I would, as I expand on my thought, the use of marijuana does not is not constrained by that uh, impetus when it's used freely. And then you show how marijuana is not subject to abuse in some regard, and I know there's a couple of things that could be. Be ready for those. It's like they're finding psilocybin with the new report come out. Psilocybin, uh, psilocybin mushrooms are it's pretty much self-checking. You don't, you don't get addicted to those. You have to have this worked out in your comment. Uh, well, well, I just said it to you, so it shouldn't be hard to go find it and, and put it in a couple paragraphs. This is what your, your comment will be up against. Was This story came right on out, but look at the context about it. About this shows it's actually the prescription drugs that they already agree that caused the trouble. And then we also know another thing. We know that marijuana, given or cannabis, given that it's natural, tends to work adversely to all synthetic medication anyway. That's not one that it doesn't work. That's actually saying it does work, and people prefer it. Use that. Again, we can build a case. I can build page after page of discussion if we want to go through it. I'm just pointing out this is not that hard to end. To throw your hat in the ring, folks. I'm really tired of hearing complaints. Oh, the government does so bad. Yeah, they're bad. You're letting them. What did you do? Oh, and I watched, I chatted in the chat rooms. Oh, I looked at another video. Here's another link to a picture. Here's a meme. Ain't this funny? Oh, I'll just argue with you for endless hours. Now I'll disconnect, go somewhere else. It's nonsense. We've got to be focused on this or else this stuff wins. And I'm only an advocate of CBD. Right now, I don't have a need for any of all of it. But I see now in the Internet, I get to look around, there is so much benefit that's not being recognized, and I don't care about whether or not they acknowledge it. The people are getting help in a natural way that they get to do, that they get to determine, and it appears that the legislated, prescriptive, cert certified, synthetic world and government is interfering with that on top of it. Uh, when I say free the weed, when I see the me, the, the, the tag, free the weed, we got to remove it completely from that system. And then maybe they need to start issuing uh, issuing uh, warnings. You, you, you can't take a synthetic medicine that we make and mix it with something natural. Maybe it causes problems. The counterindications, they call them, I think. The last thing in the world that we need is to introduce another legal substance where we may be adding to the toll and to the carnage on our highways. Well, I don't think he's a doctor to say so. Uh, and how about a not? How about a non-legal substance? How about a non-criminal substance? How about a natural substance? How about we just stop prescribing drugs that hurt people because they can't be trained, trusted to use them properly? That that's on that that should be a history that's on the doctor. Anyway, so here's a story that you're going to be up against. I look at it, I see all the answers for how it actually helps you. When you say, well, it was a, a, a if not fraudulent, 
representation. It was a misrepresentation to blame marijuana as a causative factor when it was the legalized stuff that actually, the misuse of legalized m m synthetics that uh, were actually not known to, the percentage of the effect of which was not known to affect the counterindicated marijuana itself. So I only see here, we haven't done a test to see, well, if you stop taking the prescription drugs, you still get your relief, and we don't have the problems of the accidents. That hasn't been investigated, so we can't use this as a to a whipping uh, whipping post for the for the cannabis. But you have to sit there and think about this and put that in a comment to challenge somebody. And guess what? I don't know where you're going to go to the WHO on any hearing they're having, but at least you got your your hat and that ring, don't you? Wouldn't that be an interest? Wouldn't that be a hoot to to sue uh, to enjoin the WHO's implementation because it wasn't recognizing your property rights for production and granted use and enjoyment? production and all that nice stuff. Wouldn't that be kind of a hoot? I just made that one up, folks. This stuff comes to me just looking at this thing. Wouldn't that be cool? Just to see where that would go. but Just to see the look on their face. How the heck do you have a right to be making a comment that, 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 dis, that destroys my property rights and production rights? Grantor. And who? Who are you? I'm not talking to the rock group or the owl. I'm talking to this organization that pretends to be something, looking up brokering the bottom line for pharma. Who are you to even say you can interfere? That's a felony in most states I know of, folks. Color of authority that interferes with your property rights or remedies and interests? Wow. Does anybody put this stuff together than me? I don't know. I don't hear much. I hope, I wish more people would. This actually came up in the mining district again. I said, you, it's not hard once you get someone claiming a, a, a an interest in your property by trying to, to control it. See, possession is control. If you if you have possession, how's normal saying they want to have a policy to interfere with it? If you have someone coming that wants to control. You can immediately ask for their title. I said this here on Friday. The second thing I want to know is: Are you coming by some authority? Are you coming by some authority? Now, what is it? I want them to confess they have an authority. Why? Because that brings it into felony. It's not just a bald, naked trespass or an assertion of a of a right to possess or control. It becomes a felony when they do it officially. I keep telling you about it. That's as fast as you need to go. These are agencies and these and the WHO purporting to ask for this are these are international felons. We heard that Canada doesn't care and Uruguay doesn't care about the prohibition, which shows you there's no authority in an organized voluntary basis that they're trying to destroy the world through called the UN. Canada to pardon convictions for cannabis as country becomes the second in the world to legalize the drug. No stores will open in Ontario, which includes Toronto. The most populous province is working on its regulations and doesn't expect stores until next spring. So regulation doesn't mean free the weed, does it? Canada, Canadians, Canucastinians everywhere will be able to order marijuana products through websites run by provinces of pri or private retailers and have it delivered to their homes by mail. Boy, they want to tie your system up. They don't free the weed here, are they? You know, they bring you into the system. I don't want to read some of this stuff. Anyway, the U.S. Customs and Border Protection invited Canada media to a conference call on Tuesday so officials could reiterate that marijuana remains illegal under United States federal law and that those who are caught at the border with pot are subject to arrest and prosecution. Canada has a, a legal marijuana since 2001. You know that? And amid... Still, they still haven't got the regulations. And uh, free the weed? Ha, what a joke. And amid excitement over arrival of legal recreational pot, many in the industry uh, spent the last days of pro pro prohibition, prohibition on tasks familiar to uh, any retail business, completing display, displays, holding mock op openings, uh, and uh, training employees of the sales tracking software. Sales tracking software. Free the weed? Capture the, capture the natives, folks. But they're going to pardon convictions for the legalized weed, which they do wherever they do this. But you see that it's not, legalization is not owning the thing. 
it's actually becoming a servitude and you're subject to the crown, if you will, in this case truly the crown, uh, what it thinks it's going to do for you legalizes it so much. In other words, the people that were going to be released from this were only the people that had convictions of 28 ounce, uh, 28 grams, I think, or less. That's not free the weed. And so I wanted to point out on this story, the, uh, the, based on some of the problems that were involved, uh, the, this is another problem with legalization, folks. I asked the question, was owning the pot itself and the amount was owning more any less natural if you owned more than the 28 grams was it less natural and you start to look at this a little differently and now you start to see well oh they own and possess something you somebody produced and I'm in the United States of America we have the right of production without reservation unless you go to your patent and it says you don't have the right to do pot and let's just keep it simple. You don't have the right to do hemp, and you don't have the right to use CBD extraction from that hemp. Well, let's go to the legal stuff, even. You want to get so bold to do cannabis, let's go to the hemp. Your, your property rights underpin this right of extraction of CBD. They don't have the right to illegalize it. Because it's not illegal for you to make it, not unlawful either. The keeper of the faith of state... Remember I said the queen has possession then. If you can own, if it's less natural to own more, the keeper of the faith of state agrees part of creation can be unauthorized, even a little bit. You start running this back, does the, does the queen, the keeper of the faith of state, does she have the right to invalidate part of creation? in order to criminalize it, regulate it. And so my, my, my return to all this is free the weed, don't decriminalize or create the leash of legalization. Legalization, and in the, in the vernacular I've heard this week now coming out, legalization is NP, NP cannabis or NPC cannabis. You're a non-player cannabis user. You don't have possession, you don't have use, you have nothing. You're just on the leash of legalization. And as long as it's not too much, you don't get to be criminalized, put in a cage. So I want people to rethink what this is all doing. As Canada has supposed it thumbed its nose at the world uh, problem. They've admitted that it has a use. You need to go there as well to show the proof. But they've then regulated it. And normal agrees with this regulation. Normal agrees with the leash of legalization. For as much as it's promoted pot, I've told you, when you look at the underpinnings of what happens in legalization, it's not what people are promoting. What it was was a bunch of people who said, Greg, get off my weed. I get to smoke. That's all I care. Okay. This is, you're going to get this. And for some of you, you don't care. I get what I need. That's all I want. That's it. Now you want to go to CBD. Oh, you can't get that because now it's been monopolized because you didn't go make a comment. So simple, you could have made a comment to not allow that to happen and, and enforce your rights. Well, where's your rights? You didn't enforce them. And we have a process we call due process administrative procedure that when you don't enforce your thing through that, then you uh, abandon it. You consent. You're voluntary it away. You want to live in a voluntary state? You're living in it. You want to, this is the problem of, of a direct, res uh, uh, strict responsibility. Is the thing that corporations get, don't have to suffer. They're exploiting that against you. To me, that's just nothing but another occupation coming. It's another attack. And I have the words in my mouth to tell them that they don't have the right. If they have a, any delegation of authority through the authorita that wants to claim through some any kind of constitution in the United States, they don't have the right to do what they're doing. Now, uh, since I'm the only voice apparently at this point that says that, I'm a candle in the wind for the most part. Thank you very much. DEA grants pharmaceutical company monopoly in medical CBD. Didn't I prepare that? If it has no use, why is the DEA uh, giving the pharmaceutical company a monopoly of medical CBD if FDA just said, no, it's not? It's the big conundrum. Go after them, folks. They're giving you, they're handing you 
this I think it's a victory there, but they're handing you the case. And I told you one of the best things to do is have each other fight, have them fight each other. A news circulated, circulated news circulated recently the DEA has rescheduled cannabidiol, uh, a CBD, the non psychoactive ingredients in cannabis by technicalities of the agent's decision actually show their rule is highly restrictive. The point of this is highly uh, is arbitrary and capricious. All right, so you, you just line out the elements that make this decision high, uh, arbitrary and capricious. The decision concerned uh, a recent FDA-approved pharmaceutical version of CBD. I mean version. How about an extract? Just an extract. Why are you making that illegal? But a special synthetic extract is okay. Is a problem. It's for you because you're being quiet. When you're not quiet, maybe for them. You flip the burden. Due to the federal government's continued prohibition of cannabis, why, here folks, as you say it, Epidiolex was prohibited from going to market unless DEA rescheduled CBD. That's what the agency did, leading some to believe that, the, quote, since the FDA approved medication is pure can, cannabidiol, CBD, that the CBD products fall into the same category. But that is not the case. The DEA decision applies only to FDA-approved drugs, meaning that they have uh, just granted GW uh, Pharmaceuticals a monopoly on plant-derived CBD. Hemp-derived CBD is no longer restricted to them. So, I don't know, again, reading more and more, if you're not interested, it doesn't matter. If you're interested but you could care less about it, it doesn't matter, does it? Uh, and I get tired of hearing your complaints. I get tired of hearing what the government's doing against you, and we have no rights, and this and that and the other. And I see nobody doing what they ought to do. And I'm saying nobody now. It's tiring to watch. So I'm going to come here again, I guess, every week, and just keep talking to some breaks through somebody. Somebody finally gets it. Then there'll be two of us. DEA plans to extend license plate surveillance programs. So you keep giving them this power, this the, the nonsense of the the, uh, uh, the conundrums they set up, the the oxymorons that they send up right in the world, right there. They're supposed to be consistent. Regulation means to make regular. The whole system's not regular, folks. There's your in, another one, boom, right there. Well, now you keep giving them the authority. They, the DEA, now in this war on drugs, is now feeling its oats. And coming along to do more. Not only can it do mono give monopolies, it's going to be surveilling you. It has DEA plans to expand license plate surveillance program. Oh, did you even know what was going on? You've heard it behind the woodshed. You've heard it in the news. It's been going on. They're going to take the database. They're going to use that database. Why? For the war on drugs. That war hasn't been ended. The United States Drug Enforcement Agency plans to expand the surveillance program that tracks and look, the location of millions of everyday people through pictures of their license plates. According to the federal contracting data, the DEA will expand the footprint of its big jackboot footprint. I wonder how much carbon that spends. It will expand the fo footprint of its license plate tracking program. Expand the footprint of an existing program. You get that? with automatic license plate readers connected to trailer-mounted speed displays. According to the contract announcement, the DEA will make a sole source award to RU2 Systems Incorporated. Now, I won't say more. The point is that they will be now checking and uh, tracking and tracing the DEA will, uh, all of this stuff. And so here, just tie it back together to your legalization registration. Just tie it to, with the thought of that they tie it all through your, you have to buy it online or make a digital record. And then they just track where you go. It's all interrelated. Here's the, your, your, your digital uh, Internet of Things future right here. And they're going through marijuana to do it. It's not free. There's nothing free about the weed. Nothing. It could be. Or, on top of it, you could make, if it doesn't, because they've got the, the oppressions on you and the occupier doesn't want you to have it, because they make lots of control and money on it. Enough of you stand up, then you can have them rest, rest possession back and production back. Until you do, until you understand what I'm really saying, you think you know more, or you think you know enough to say, I can't, or I've got an excuse, 
you're not getting it. Uh, just that, that, that clear. And if I, and if I, again, I'll say it again. If I didn't have a core of colleagues around me that show me the distinction, I guess I could think I was a lunatic. So I'm pretty certain about what I'm saying about all of you all that make the excuses. Complain, whine, but turn your, your aggression, your frustration against others or the system itself and do nothing. Do nothing in the smallest thing. And so here we have the DEA collecting more evidence. It's a surveillance society, surveillance system. Epic FOIA records show the DHS ignored privacy, First Amendment threats to media monitoring program. Why do I go to the DEA, uh, DHS? They're the overarching, now since the new formula, reorganization of the government after 9-11, they are the pinnacle, the, the, the apex feeder. Which, under which the DEA is under getting all this data and it's being funneled through that system. If you don't think that we're a now big a prison system, here it comes. And they're going to use the, the, the war on drugs to do it. And marijuana registration, you hear the thing out of Canada, you're going to be an electronic registry to buy this stuff. Oh, you get to use it. No, don't, don't forget, you get to tie that to all your medical records, all your government records, and they're going to keep a track on this. You smoke a little bit too much, your social credit goes away. You may not better get a bit. You can't get a gun in some places now in the United States, apparently. Because you use. Are you, is anybody thinking ahead on all this to try and at least throw down a resistance now? But Epic FOIA says that the government won't honor you. The, the, the DHS, the Apex Feeder, will not, uh, it could care less about the First Amendment. In its monitoring programs, you talk about the DEA expanding its jackboot footprint. These are notice, folks. I don't know what to say. I'm, part of me is terrified. Part of me just says, get on with it. Well, get to this. You'll look, if you don't know now, you'll learn as you engage. As I, again, get the emails. You didn't quite understand what, what you were facing when you walk into something. And you got a lesson. And it didn't hurt so bad. It was probably what you were going to do if you hadn't said it. But you got to see what it was. It's a whole new awareness, isn't it? I'll, everyone, I'll know better next time. Oh, well, see, that's an ignorance we thought we knew. But now it's fixed because you engaged. That's what happens here. But all this stuff I'm talking to you on the administrative side has zero jeopardy. And yet, it can have a great force and effect. So, we're just on notice. The, the apex feeder of the occupation, the uh, war of terror against you, uh, will not, there is no constraint of the Constitution that they readily acknowledge. Okay, I said a lot of, oh, no duh, a lot of, no duh. Well, they got there by some method, and your no duh was because before you didn't say, hey, wait. Smart home surveillance. Governments tell Google's Nest to hand over data 300 times. Well, if the DHS don't care, you think any subgroup don't are gonna care? Anyone pumped for this week's launch of Google Home's Hub might want to temper their excitement, just like the Doge dude. Palmer, he says, hey, there's a reality here. You might want to temper your excitement for things digital. The Internet of Things. The smart home is a surveilled home. That's been the concern of privacy advocates since citizens started lighting up their abodes with so-called smart tech technocracy, folks. In recent years, the, the Take Google's current smart home division, Nest Labs, uh, Spider Nest, uh, Hornet's Nest, uh, Snake Nest, what? I'm sure all you creative people in the chat can come up with lots of nest words here. It's been uh, told to, uh, to hand over, the, 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 this nest labs have been told to hand over data on 300 separate occasions since 2015. That's according to a little documented transparent re transparency report from Nest launched a year after $3.2 billion Google acquisition. You, you think this big data is not important, folks? They dump billions into this stuff? How do they have this, too? 
fascinating. The, the report shows around 60 requests for data were received by Google's unit in the first half of this year alone. In all of those cases were recorded from 2015 onward, governments have sought data on as many as 525 Nest uh, account holders. He's saying today was the day or that when this re report was written was when it finally rolled out. Again, it precedes you folks. Forbes revealed the first uh, known case in the United States in which Nest handed over surveillance feeds and customer data for from its cameras. Indeed, it appears to be first documented case in Nest assisting law enforcement in such a manner anywhere in the world. Anywhere in the world. Novel. First time. Here it is, folks. Your warning. This is something serious. Pay attention. The information was provided to investigators looking into $1.2 million fraud perpetrated by rap crew that had taken control of surveillance technology tracking 95% of Americans, folks. Well, they're talking about Google Nest. That was 95% of, of Americans. I told you, watch your phones. So there, here, there's no nothing that's not a problem in the Internet of Things. There's nothing that's in this digital that you don't, aren't vulnerable to. And uh, we can do the, keep plugging into the silent weapon of quiet war used against us. They hand you the weapon and you put it to your head and pull the trigger. We do it every time. And a lot of this is because we won't not do it or do something different. Like I said before, it goes right back through this broadcast. When we, we look today at the fiat people, the fiat paper people are getting worried about the, about going digital. We should have had the same concerns when they went from, from uh, money, the, the specie, the silver and gold. We don't do that as people. We need to start doing that. I don't really more what you know seems to be the only observation I have. Now, this stuff is so terrifying, so horrendous that we were talking about that uh, last week, talking about that Atlas guy, uh, that guy, that robot, that thing that can go up 40 centimeters in a hop and go up another block in a hop, another block, and then do a double flip or do a flip front flip at the top. And then they showed this little dog that could track you down, this motorized robot. Well, apparently it scared a few people. Boston Dynamics tries to calm fears over a robot uprising with twerking RoboDog. You see what they're doing? They know they have a problem. They can't scare the natives. That dog freaked people out, so we're going to do something cute. We're going to make it dance. I need you to go watch that video. I won't have a link. Just track it down. And I want you to see what that little robot can do. It's really cool, but terrifying. They're building in motion capacities now that are, I don't know. Well, the technocrat can dance, folks, is all I can tell you. Of course, it's a bit, a bit crude. But they've come a long way. And what they've got to do is keep you calm down. They can't keep you getting a furred of this. You can't get a furred of it because they know you won't accept it. So they have their little dog come out and do a dance. Understand the dynamic there. Boston dynamics, people dynamics. They have to keep your confidence. And they have to keep their confidence because it's not meant to help you. I said, Who's, who said technocrats can't dance? Then out of the article that I was responding to, that article there, uh, it has a, 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 quite a quote, which I think is relevant. As I talked to you last week, uh, these things uh, are getting kind of scary. And they got to come out the next week to calm your fear. Let's make the doggy robot dance. That's telling you, that's, telling you something. And the uh, article quote was, the need for a portable EMP has never been greater. I have to concur. The way these things are coming along, I don't know what it would take. Uh, I can't say that I don't know a design for an EMP. It's not really that portable, but it would fit in a wagon. It's not your little handheld nonsenses either. I'm talking about, I'm talking about uh, something that actually T reaches out and touches quite a wide area, not a city, maybe half a block. And for those of you that are maybe interested, maybe if you can, I couldn't find anything, but maybe a coil spring from a car is a, 
There's a compressed trigger might give you an idea on the amount of power and speed that's required in creating a field that's collapsing big enough to create an EMP field that'll do something. But the quote, again, the need for a portable EMP has never been greater. We might have to have these things in our houses. When they're trying to make a cute and cuddly robot, cute and cuddly, we should take note. Stop technocracy is a hashtag moving around. You might want to start to look and adopt it. Part of me just is just a, at awe at what we come up with in technology and all this stuff. What I see and realize as I go through life, a lot of these uh, things aren't used for our benefit. It's used by those that see the advantage they can take from us. That should indicate that should indicate our fallen nature too. And this is why I tell you, like Cain killed Abel. Well, that we have a problem. But that's we are. Uh, uh, us against ourselves. But it's only a few of us against ourselves. And they get a whole bunch of other people in order to in order to uh, help them. Genghis Khan and his horde didn't do Genghis Khan didn't do it without his horde, folks. And so there's no horde against him. He just comes in and pillages your town. That's it. And so we continue on this technocracy. We continue to look at the notice in the news about how this all works. We see GM appoints the ex-CIA deputy director on its board. Well, this brings up a whole lot of things. CIA and GM, board of directors, government motors. Remember the bailout, too. Remember the star uh, service tracking you down, controlling your car. Remember the surveillance built into your car as a communication devices that DHS is going to use. They don't care about your any of your constitutional rights. Why? Because they're sitting in a military occupation. They don't have to. That's for you. That's the false front they put up for you. And until you start pressing on those things, and I don't see you walk in and say we're under military martial law, that won't work. You just have to press them where I'm telling you to press them on the things that they didn't recognize that they were supposed to as vested in you. Now we don't talk anything about the condition. We start right at the Achilles heels. GM appoints an ex-CIA direct, deputy director on its board. I find that interesting. Do I care about what the really story is? Not really. But there's a reason. And don't remember, don't forget the Clint Richardson's Corporation Nation. Government authorities are interjected in lots and lots and lots of corporations on the board of directors. Why do you think that is? You think you're being surveilled? You think you're being set up? You think it's all before you? These people are already in place, folks. We got to, you're going to attack GM? No, you can't even address that. That's just notice to us of where the players are being placed. They're already lots of them are already in place. No one will be recognizing. Them. We continue to allow them to take over the place and do what they will. We never have planted our flag, our land, our rights, anything correctly. I see so many people who think they know to, they think they know how the how it's going to work, uh, that it doesn't matter how much they've read, uh, that they they get into the they get into the fray because they're now being attacked and they find out how little they actually know. And they're dealing in two things they may not, may or may not understand. One is they're dealing with the, what they thought they knew that wasn't. And they're also dealing with a system that isn't what it says. In a condition that's not been described to most people. And I only think I know it because I can see the, the, what, you know them by their deeds. I know them by the effect of what they do. And then you start putting a, well that effect can only come from a couple of places. If nothing else, I can see the method on how they get to these effects. I can I can subvert those once I find them. You can too, but you got to take an interest. You want CBD from hemp to be uh, withdrawn, you're going to have to work to get it, but it's there. The basic foundation is there as I talked today. The anomalies in the system itself, the lack of regulation between the agencies is is a weakness that they've now created for you. It's like, to me, it's like they're handing you this stuff on a platter. Why aren't we picking it up? Of all the people I know interested in cannabis, and particularly the health angle, I'm just 
kind of shocked. There isn't more more uh, advantage taken about a lot, a, lot, a lot of this. Revealed how U.S. and U.K. spy agencies defeat Internet privacy and security. Where again, the surveillance state coming up around us. The registration conditions. Legalization is registration somewhere. Canada, you see, they make it into a digital, they put in a digital database. That could be your blockchain. And it's all tied into the government. Government of the United States can, oh, you better not come over here with that. We're going to get you. But then they turn around and said, but who, what, 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 how are we going to, do we have a way to maybe modify this that we can go against our own decisions? Do you think that's going to happen? Complete nonsense. DHS investigators argue the border warrant exception covers searches performed miles from the border. You think you only have a constitutional free zone 100 miles in and around 100 miles out to every port? They're going to take over the country with this. DHS doesn't care. They're not underneath the Constitution at this point, it seems. And none of you step up to point out certain things. Not about the Constitution, but about what they're doing that's violative. DHS is back in court arguing that for its right to expand border searches to cover the entire country. Boy, this is prime for a fraud uh, assertion, isn't it? The case in which the Homeland Security investigators are making the, the, this dubious claim involves the placement of GPS device on a truck crossing the Canadian border, which FBI agents then tracked all the way down to California. The bust carried out in Southern California turned up plenty of legal frozen pastries and four bags of cocaine-like substance known uh, as regular ash sugar. I had to read that, folks. It was only a three-letter word, though. Excuse me. The, uh, well, it was hyphenated. But the FBI posited this was a trial run for actual drugs and chose to take its collected evidence to court where it was promptly thrown out by the presiding judge. As the judge saw it, the tracking a vehicle inland requires the warrant border exception to the warrant requirements can't be expanded to cover searches performed more than a mile, 100 miles constitution-free zone area. Now, very important case, but they have the right they're claiming. And you really should follow this case to find out how they're going to do that. They want to regulate the rest of this country underneath the most oppressive condition, and our silence is allowing that. Excuse me, and revealed how U.S. K, uh, US, US and U.K. spy agencies defeat Internet privacy, again, getting back to the digital in, in, uh, incursions, uh, they are, it's known now, which is public knowledge, which is very much difficult when it was secret. We now have the ability to go at it because it's public knowledge of, that the fact is that countries don't care if we didn't know before. What I'm saying is you use these facts in a specific statement to do a specific thing. You don't keep it general. You, you find out what the story is about this and how they're doing it, how they're coming against us, and you be the one that steps up. Because if if you don't and no one else does, they you'll you'll read you'll read headlines that say pharma gets monopoly, and they will is the problem. They'll get that, and yet as I hopefully pointed out to you, anybody anywhere that would have put in a more cogent idea, comment would have had the ability to make an obstruction to that. And if you know a little bit more, you can then put on the obligation as we see that they're derelict to do, that's another Achilles heel, to actually go do the checking that they're derelict to go look at because they don't want to look at it. Why? Because if they do expose it, it might actually say they can't do what they're doing. Thank you for tuning in today. I hope something I said will inspire you to just jump in and do something. Grimner, thank you for what you do over at reallibertymedia.com where we have the broadcaster and a bunch of other shows and hosts. And thank you for all you all guys do there and the women uh, to bring the, pro the broadcasts uh, to us. And the information and the art. Thank you for doing the new new show. Tune in. I think he's coming in right after me here, folks. And keep tuned in uh, live uh, as, as he does. And I'll see you next week. Tech diffs or nature will. Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast. This is Hal Anthony. Till next time, journey with purpose. Good
that's what opening up a can of whoop-ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop-ass. 